Today, we're not gonna make a cocktail. What I wanna do is take the time with Warren Bobro, me and Ian. Andrew, see what I did there? I did the intro. That was good. We okay. wanna talk about bitters. Very low key until you pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> I like to point out my failure and then kick vodka. It's a so, cocktail contest, New Orleans uh, conference. Yes, Tales of the Cocktail, you, July. You, you want to go to Tales of the Cocktail. It's a blast. It's a great time. Um, today, what I wanted to do is go through and just do kind of generalized open talk about cocktail bitters because this is my problem I have, Warren. Everybody asks me what the heck cocktail bitters are, and mm -hmm. I have a hard time because of my enthusiasm so high right. to explain it without like just okay. going well, 40 let's, minutes let, in. Let's look at the historical context of people living without refrigeration and having stomach aches. I hate stomach aches, Back man. in the day, back in the day of De General Bolivar, and he was down in what, Venezuela, mm -hmm. and he was fighting, uh, you know, against the, the powers that be. But his soldiers were all stricken with dysentery. Ah. So they were sitting down on the job, and they weren't getting the job done, which required standing up for. Because they were so too busy. They were, they were sitting on the, on the job. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Benjamin Siegert, who was an apothecarian, Jewish guy, came down to uh, to Venezuela, and he invented a product is which is called Angostura. Angostura. And finished? Angostura bitters are the cure-all. It's been decades since I've taken an Alka-Seltzer with this around. A tablespoon of Angostura bitters in a glass of seltzer water, a pint of seltzer water, with a pinch of salt is more powerful against a bellyache than anything you can buy in a pharmacy today. Okay. And it's good for you. It makes a great old fashioned. Yes. It just does. <laughs> it makes a great Angostura sour. It makes a great everything. It he, makes great chicken. He, I have an Angostura bitters chicken, which will knock your socks off. Like. It's a quarter cup of Angostura bitters with about a five or six pound chicken cut into eighths. Toss it with the Angostura bitters in a stainless steel or glass right. bowl overnight in the refrigerator and then grill it over hardwood charcoal. It's brilliant. Oh, I bet that tastes awesome. Trinidad sour. It does. You're going to make a Trinidad sour? It's in one of my books, too, oh, so it has it? to be good. <laughs> it's so good, he published it in a book. Well, I'm also a chef, so I can do that. Oh, then you can do like... Yeah. So, so what did bitters do? Bitters were meant to settle the stomach. And how did they become flavored? Well, they become flavored just over the last two or three hundred years or so. That's a lot Because it, and bitters have to have... Genshin root, they have to have, sometimes they have orris, sometimes they have wormwood. They have a lot of the same ingredients that are in ver vermouth, right. which, by the way, was never vilified and absinthe was, and vermouth has more wormwood than absinthe. Huh. So this, yeah. And it was, and you know what the original use for bitters were, other than for the bellyache, but mm. for an, for lice, for head lice. And that's why Rub vermouth, it in your head? vermouth was great because of the wormwood. It killed the, the head lice, and it also killed intestinal worms which was in everything that people ate, was filled with worms, because yeah. they didn't have a USDA to be protecting us from what yeah, might true. ail us. They also didn't have good refrigeration. And so that's why bitter, you know, bitters are, are really important from a healing perspective. It just happens to be a, a more recent appreciation for flavor that's brought bitters into the healing realm of healing what ails us. And what ails us is a well-balanced cocktail, and what bitters does is it, it, it balances the sweet and the sour, right. and, the, and the bitter, and the dark, and the dense, and all the different things that happen in a cocktail, in a well-crafted cocktail, has different layers of flavor. Bitters happen to be that great finishing flavor. So what is your opinion on the, on the different, like flavors, it used to be aromatic bitters, right? Right, that, that would just be your, like your Kensington right. Dry, or a Angostura. So now they have, so they have the Angostura, and then they came out with the orange, and everybody right. now, uh, Gary's got uh, Gary's is great. My fa one of my favorites. I love the uh, Joe Fee's orange, West, wherever West that Indian. is. You know, yeah. the West Indian orange. And then there's the oak aged West Indian, which I or not oak aged, just oak aged. gin. No, the, yeah, gin barrel aged. Gin barrel aged. So I mean, the orange bitters. Um, but like, so you really can become sophisticated with simple ingredients, and anyone can be a star. Right. And I can give you all of my secrets by saying, okay, well, you have 20 different bitters here, and you can make a simple drink and do it 20 different ways with every single one of these. And you bitters. get a different. So you're you're cool it's with like the fact there's well, so many flavors. Well, it's well, of course, absolutely. And I, at home, I have about two or three hundred different types of bitters. That might be all different. You probably have more than I have. I have more than that, but they're all like dukes. Right, right. Cases yeah, but cases. these are all different, and some of them are one-offs, and some of them are things like those those uh, those cedar bitters that I have yeah, in yeah. Canada. I mean, those are just incredible. No one has anything like that. 
And that gives you the uniqueness of being able to build a drink nobody else. And you, dr and you build drinks that speak a different language than people are accustomed to. And I think that's important. Because I, I like when I talk to people, they're like, oh, you know, the bitters have jumped the shark. Everybody's got a bitter that does this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, yeah, but they're all cool. And it doesn't matter if everybody duplicates the effort. You know, there's only one Jerry Thomas bitter that I That's know right. of. That's right. Right? But there's plenty of orange bitters. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also to the detriment of a lot of companies. Like, uh, have you had the Angostura orange? I think they're, they're, I think they're out of balance. They're, yeah, they're weird, right? But they still they don't sell nearly as well as Angostura does. Well, but Angostura has so many different uses. I mean, do you ever make a, a bowl of uh, butternut squash soup and put a couple dashes of Angostura bitters in it? That's one of those great things that you can right. do for yourself. But and it heals your gut while you're doing it. They oh, have it's too far like the hell of this is oh this is smoked chili. This is really good. Well yeah, done. well done. It, this tastes That's like a, a, a fan submission, I believe. That's a delicious, yeah, delicious yeah. drink. Alice Angostura in there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have the, the yeah, that's really nice. And and my my gut was feeling fine, but now it'll be feeling even gonna, better. Than gonna, fine. My gut's gonna be raising his hands, right like, ooh, going all crazy. Wacky, it's gonna be awesome. Wacky, wacky, because wacky, 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 it's all about <laughs> cannabis cocktail. cocktail. So the next thing will happen, I have to have cannabis bitters, right? And, right. and we obviously, I'm we sure. Well, we do already. Cannabis. We have we have the stone We're hiding around this, somewhere. It's, I put it back in the box. But the stone chocolate bitter. The best chocolate bitter, so that's good. Um, that's black walnut. Um, what would you think is... Uh, Scrappy's is pretty good. Scrappy's makes a good one. Like, that's good for, like, Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Aztec, Aztec chocolate. Aztec the chocolate. Aztec from uh -huh. uh, Fee Brothers is good. It, yeah. It's affordable. Um, right, it is. It, it's not $30 a bottle. It's right. $9 a bottle. So if you're... If, it, one of the things that I saw in... I don't Arizona think it was Bitters Labs. The Arizona... The, uh, the Mas Mole. And then a, yeah, Mas Mole. Yeah. There's... Um, uh, there's the tiki, or no, the El Macule. No, there it is. Yeah, the yeah. chocolate the, mole. Right, the Bitterman's. Bitterman's chocolate mole. Great product, mole. world class. Again, you're in the twenty dollar range. Who's that the, guy from England? Uh, Adam. Oh yeah. Yeah, Adam's got. Does he have a chocolate bitter? I think so. Is teapot. it the, the teapot? No, that's oh, more no, no, of it's a. The, uh, it's the um, oh, car. the green one. It's the uh, Aphrodite. Aphrodite bitters. Okay. Got they it. have they have cocoa nibs. Okay. I mean, well, yeah. see, there you have it's it. It's not really as chocolatey. But that's but it's more bitter. It's bitter, yeah. not sweet, and right. that's what I again. Those the are the dark, things I like working the with. The dark chocolate flavor, like mm -hmm. a, like a dark European chocolate. The the bitters, my favorite go to for chocolate is Scrappies. Uh, I think some of the bitters. I don't know if this would work in champagne, but I have seen some people putting rhubarb bitters in a champagne cocktail. That's a great idea. I use uh, rhubarb bitters in mint juleps with yep. coconut water ice and white rum. Coconut water ice, so you actually take the water and freeze it. Uh huh. You have the little coconut floating in it too. Uh huh. That's pretty crazy. That's crazy. Like that, you're that's thinking ahead. That's why I'm the cocktail whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, you know what, honey, what are you doing? I'm making coconut ice. You're what? Coconut water ice. I'm making coconut well, water ice. When you're down in the islands and water's expensive and it's mm. mostly poisonous, and you open up a little bottle of coconut water and it's always perfect. So you have always perfect. Sanitary ice. Oh, there you go. Sanitary ice. Uh, it's sanitary is always good. Keeps you and hydrated. it's always good because it keeps you hydrated and it has lots of potassium in it, I which keeps you awake. And it's also great antioxidant. So you're not going to fall asleep on the you're beach. You're not going to fall asleep behind the wheel while you're sailing right. towards the reefs nice. in your $3 million sailboat. <laughs> Let me tell you what. If I'm driving in a $3 million sailboat, I ain't falling asleep. Yeah, well, you know, people do all the time. They bury those sailboat. boats in I the reefs yeah. all the time. Yeah. No, we, we no. never know. No. Never. But you see people in their big yachts, and the big yacht would be right up against the reef. Because they got, they had a little too much to drink at lunch what in you, that, that hot sun. That's one thing I like about this place uh, on White Beach, uh -huh, White yeah, Bay, White Sandcastle all, Bay, where all the uh, catamarans just pull up and everybody well, dives it's, in. Because it's very, very steep yeah. there, and that's why they call it Soggy Dollar because yes. there's no dock. Yeah, because right. you jump in. You off jump the boat in and you're... thinking that there's sand. You see the sand, yeah. and you jump in, and it's it's 20 feet deep. Oh, because it's so crystal clear. It, yeah, yeah. No, it's not that. It, it drops off right. Oh, right. really quickly. You only have maybe three or four feet of sand in the water and then it drops how off does the sand not feet. erode away it's this yeah, unique this the place it's, it's a unique i think place. about 20 feet out i'm like this deep. yeah you're yeah, it's really yeah. incredible but yeah, and it's but you get too. off the boat and you think that you're just going to go in up to your knees and suddenly you're up to your head <laughs> 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 that's, that soggy dollar you know the soggy dollar and like on a, bar. you get there on a sunday and there's catamarans lined up oh, along yeah. the whole and day big boats. it's all the uh, the big bar boat. staff from st thomas yeah. and everything they pull their money on their day off, yeah, and they the go catamaran and go to the, go to the soggy. I don't think that sounds like it sucks. 
No, it, 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 life doesn't suck at all. So what do you consider to be a dash? A dash would be anything less than an ounce. <laughs> <laughs> Because so, there, there's just over a dash of Angostura in this Okay, drink. anything less. <laughs> that, that reminds me kind of like a pink gin. Mm. But it's pink. It is pink. Like so pink it's red. Mm -hmm. Brown. It's bloody. This bloody. is, that right there, that Looks is dirty. what Avery from Bitter Bitterman's thinks is a dash. That's not a dash. Right. But, uh, even though to Avery, he's, he probably knows more than I do as far as what a dash is. But, but a dash the thing for me is, is like this. But, in, in cooking, it's like that. But the thing is, because of the way the dasher works here, it's, right. it doesn't, people think it's not going to, first off, they think it's going to go all the way to the top, which it doesn't. No, right? it doesn't. No. And then they think, oh, it's bad because it's got all that stuff. And that's just no, that's, that's, bitters. That's, that's, that's bitters the best part. That's quality. Right. That shows me that it's not filtered. But and But then I like that. you get, boom. Now this, a dash from this, uh, yeah. from Jack Rudy, uh -huh. not nearly the same. It's a no. different, different level. So a dash, you end up with what you're saying is like this vague, uh -huh, theoretical number yeah. and then you right. have well, these guys right and they have a dasher mm -hmm. but that dasher size is different than a sampler because bottle because it's wider yeah. right and so, if you I, buy so samples, I don't know so what is a dash yeah. I think that's what I said anything less than an ounce I would go with an eighth of an ounce an eighth of an ounce okay that's but it. See, that's very not, hard to measure yeah, it's very hard to measure well, how about putting it into an atomizer that's what I would do I would say okay. you, if you do it like this now these are the Urban Moonshine guys from Vermont okay. right yep um, and you can spray it around the uh, edges. That's what I do. Wait, that's what I do. Then I would and use that's a great way bar. to do a rinse. Uh -huh. if you have I'm to doing a cocktail it. in New York at the uh, at the Plaza Hotel next week, week after, whatever. Um, the it's a big big event, lots of cocktails, and I'm doing uh, Dolin vermouth mm -hmm. in atomizers. I'm putting three squirts of Dolin from the atomizer into a martini glass. Topping it with Mamont vodka from Siberia that we're bringing in at Niche, um, and it's uh, and finishing off with a slice of European cucumber. That's that. it. Simple. It's, it's simple. Yeah. There's a great it's vodka delicious. bar in New York. Uh, what, what is the name? Of it? I was vodka just bar? Yeah, I was just reading about it. Uh, just vodka. It's like it's, a, vodka. it's like a breakfast place during the day, and they transform into oh, this wow. Rus I, I Russian know. vodka yeah. bar. Oh, it sounds great. Well, where they have their own infusions well, and you crystal know, the decanters Russians are, and everything. I'm really yeah. passionate about that. You know, you know, in Russia they don't mix their vodka. Vodka is a social drink. It's like yeah. uh, it's like schnapps. Mm. It's dr it's drunk as a way of bringing people together, as opposed to just getting messed up even though they do drink quite a bit of it but right but the it's fact how is, long you get together but for. <laughs> the fact is you're not drinking a lot of it so you're drinking vodka in half ounce portions and they mm. drink it with freshly pressed apple juice on the side oh, yum. never mixed in chaser. only on the side is a chaser <laughs> freshly pressed I so it has a very specific flavor of a tartness and it's like a special a, tart apple that they do use. you like the the bison grass vodka I, I like that. Uh, yeah, I, I like I'm that. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, but, it, but the Mamont that vodka that they have in Russia has a specific type of nut in it that we, for some reason, we can't have here in the United FDA. States. Whatever. Yeah, it's not permitted. But it's called a cedar tree nut, and it, it has, you can't tell by the visual of it, it's still clear, but it has a specific flavor, which is mm. really unique, and it's quite delicious. Cedar it makes you want to drink the entire bottle without any problem. <laughs> and I have nice. scars on my left leg to prove from the uh, where I fell down hard. <laughs> I fell down hard. I <laughs> never drink like that. I never drink like that. We drank eight bottles of this stuff between six people. Sometimes you need you know, to drink like that crazy. to remind yourself why you don't. I know. There was a planter in the middle of the sidewalk, and there's no street lights, and I hit it right at my shin and went... Superman. <laughs> it's like walking into a trailer. It's it was all about oh, it, it. cannabis cocktail. No, there yeah. was no cannabis involved. There's no cannabis, but, but there there's been. a cannabis there cocktails been. book coming out by Warren on June first. June first. Pre-order. So this is how I solve the bit dash problem. If you put it in a standardized okay. dasher, right? Unfortunately, I have one of them right now. Uh -huh. So if I, it would cost me a fortune to put everything I ever but have. But you go to a place like Employees Only. Where they have those. This place right there. How'd you get a tattoo? And uh, yeah, you should you know, put it on your, behind your uh -huh. ear. You'll never get a corporate job again yeah. <laughs> and uh well, and, you know and they have all of these okay. you know across the bar yeah they have fancy and, and all their stations have yeah, like the crystal oh yeah they're stuff. nice yeah and that way they they could i mean it makes more sense especially for them if you're going to make a science of everything and you want it to be the same mm -hmm. ratio no matter what that makes the most sense the right. other thing you can do is you can always pick up this book here right oh, does this use bitters it does it's all about it <laughs> says and bitters shrubs. and shrubs so i mean there's there's two ways you can go about it Learn how to make bitters in a standardized drink that just calls for bitters. If you get a drink that calls for bitters, it just says two, five dashes of bitters, aromatics. aromatics. What are you going to use? 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because you always do something different. Because I always, because I never remember what the heck I'm doing from day to day. <laughs> Does it depend on the drink that you're making and it, what it the flavor profile on, is? No, really, what it depends on is the what people come to me and I say, "What do you like to drink?" And mm. then I create something a la minute according to what they like to drink. Right. And you know, if I was had a bar like this at home, which I have a bar like this, but probably was more liquor, but not as fancy and not yeah. as nice. <laughs> Um, there's just so many things you could do here. When we were at uh, the Carousel Bar, remember they made a uh, what did they? Oh, they made the uh, Boston Sour where they put the uh, they used the chocolate bitters in there. From was it yeah. Fee? Yeah, 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 the, 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 yeah, the, the uh, Aztec bitters and and, yeah. and you know that you take a Manhattan and you add those Aztec bitters and you now have a different drink. Yes. Which makes for a lot more cool factor because now you can do that with five yeah. different bitters. The combinatorics, the combinatorics on adding bitters to drinks make the possibilities infinite. Right. I mean, literally, you'll never be able to explore all the possibilities in your lifetime if you have a drink. I, I think you could, but you would have trouble with it. Now, the Russian guy, my you friend Andre, life, see, you drink yourself he's death. watching. Oh, really? My, guy, my friend from Russia, Andre. Is he correcting us? No, he's, <laughs> but he's a good guy, and you know, he's, he knows what's going on. Huh. He's looking at you. He's on the show? He's, he's watching, he's, uh, he's watching my, my feed right now. Oh, okay, nice. So there a, is. As you spam it, I can't read that. And it's in it's in Russian. Yeah, I figured that. <laughs> you, you don't understand the, 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 the Russians know. really love us. I they can't. really do. They don't hate us like we're meant to believe. And yeah. they're all about authenticity. And Jerry Thomas rules there. It's incredible. Jerry Thomas. It's all about Jerry Thomas. That's one of the best Bergenhock bitter sellers that we have. Is the Jerry Thomas bitters. It's good stuff. I mean, aside from aromatic, which I've sold out of, and I got to get back mm -hmm. in stock. But the Jerry Thomas is. They, people back. buy it. By three or four at a time. Oh, gone again. Oh, gone and back. Gone Our back. stream is up and down, huh? Yep. Ah, well. Uh, that's fine. They can watch the show when I actually film or, or uh, let me do. launch it. Yes, that's it. Merci, uh, Remy. Uh, <laughs> so that, my friends, explains bitters by somebody that's not me, which makes it more valid. Yes, I do have more alcohol. <laughs> yes, that is so. Uh, you can have more alcohol than Derek if you're in the industry. It's possible. He, I am in the industry. He's been in the industry longer, so he's Not probably really. Good product. Not really. You don't think so? Since 2010, since Ministry oh, no. of Rum. Okay, never mind. Since oh, okay. I was Ministry of Rum judge in 2010. All right. Well, that's when it started. started. It. That's you not started, very long. What, eight years ago? I started in 2008. 20, 2008. Yeah. Yeah. 20, 1928? Yeah, yeah you show your age. Right. Right. <laughs> he doesn't age very well. It's, it's all the vinegar. I know, really I like the vinegar and whiskey. It's all I live on. Uh, Viniski. Viniski. So this is the Angostura Sour. You can search it on YouTube. Wait. The Trinidad Sour. Trinidad. This is Trinidad and, Sour. And, we, and we smoked it. No, did we smoke it? No, we didn't smoke we, it. We, I didn't we, smoke we probably it. didn't, but then. Not we, later. Yeah. Um, so that, my friends, is a little bit on bitters from Warren Bobro. And... Um, Go pick up his books. He's got lots of them. You Klaus. can search for Warren Bobro. Ooh, you can find known. Klaus anywhere on his Instagram. Bitters and Shrub Syrup cocktails make the most sense for this specific episode because if you're watching this, you obviously had some interest in bitters, so you just like to watch us, which is fine. But you can also check out the book that's not out yet, which is why I printed this. Mm -hmm. It's called Cannabis Cocktails, Mocktails and Tonic. You have mocktails in here? Yeah, I do. I have a whole chapter oh, nice. on mocktails. Is it considered a mocktail if you're using cannabis? Uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Don't just ever ask me that before. <laughs> hey, my brother, you, you've challenged me. It is a, it, it is. It's a mocktail because it's sans alcohol. There you go. <laughs> okay. It's not avec alcohol. It's sun alcohol. So yeah, it is a mocktail. Okay. So Even though it has a little. So my kids can have that then, because it's a mocktail. Um. <laughs> See. If you See gave them the... a CBD and they maybe had seizures and you wanted to control their seizures, absolutely. No, they don't have any of that. Okay. Well, you know, what I'm is, but I'm trying to offer a, 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 a pro cannabis approach. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. So but you, you go to Amazon and search for Warren. There you Warren go. Warren and you can find all his books on Amazon. You can find all my books there, yes. And then Thank you can you. just order them all, pre-order this one, that way it shows up in... It shows right? up in an hour. June 1st. June 1st. And it show, but it shows up on my metric in an hour, so I can so see that you've done something, and it's very much appreciated. And that will help and us. Also, we were talking before, if you want a signed copy of... Yes, you books. can contact the Bookworm in Bernardsville, New Jersey. I, I'm not quite sure the web address, but I believe yeah. it's just... It's, Google will it's, tell you. Google, Google will, will tell you. you. They will tell you everything. And I'll <laughs> go in, I'll sign the book however you would like to have me sign it. And then they'll mail it to you. And it's pretty fantastic. It yeah, really cool can't get that? easier awesome. than that. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed our bitters uh, conversation. And uh, we actually covered a lot of stuff. And uh, definitely go to the Soggy Dollar Bar because it sounds really cool. It is awesome. It is 
picturesque Caribbean. Pi- or Caribbean. I can Caribbean use some... Caribbean. There's two pronunciations. I Once go, right I go with the right one. Yeah. I don't know it's if you're It's beautiful. I love it. All right. We good? Yeah. We're done. We're teaching how to drink. You're drinking uh, uh, really a natural product that yeah. no one is really doing on, uh, on this scale. There's there's a beautiful clearness at the edge. <laughs> it's there's, better than my watermark yeah. glassware. No, right. We should have been polishing these beforehand. I don't know. <laughs> we got the towels back here. Oh, you know, we love under- these glasses.